This right here is exactly where you're going to make your money as an architect. If you're exceptional at elevation design, especially in 3D as well as in 2D, you can do exceptionally well in your career. So today we're breaking down elevations and showing you exactly how to document them in ARCHICAD. What's going on team? Welcome back to the channel. My name's David Tomic. I'm a registered architect here in Western Australia. And this is the completely free ARCHICAD course right here on YouTube. Welcome back to episode eight, where we're focusing on this beautiful elevation you see before us. We need to make this thing absolutely stunning. And we're gonna do that both in 2D and in 3D. So let's start by jumping up to our floor plan and moving up to our upper floor. I think there's just subtle ways we can really manipulate this and make it even better. So let's start by grabbing this external wall, moving it about a meter, connecting it with our other external wall, and just simply reconnecting these corners. Jumping back into 3D, we'll see straight away, pushing it out gives us a little bit of a cantilever over this floor edge and makes it just stand out that little bit more. Our slab in the middle is for whatever reason the wrong color and so is most of our building if I'm being honest. What I wanna do is select all of my external walls, Command T, open them up, change my material to some sort of white. Let's go to titanium white, which is absolutely fine for now. This allows us also to change the slab edge to titanium white. So if I press OK, find all the walls that weren't selected previously, make sure they go white as well. We're starting off with a pretty basic white house. Next, we want to extend our slab all the way across to the edge of the balcony, align it with our external walls, and then add a little bit more to this design because at the moment, it's pretty basic, it's pretty boring. So what we created up here before was a little planter. So what we need to do here is go to our mesh tool and introduce a little bit of fill or earth. So if I change that across, change it to earth brown, we can see now that's a perfect little planter for either some cascading plants, a little tree or anything in between. We don't have too much room left on our site, but we wanna maximize the width to make this thing look really, really wide. So if we come back to our ground floor plan, right click, show us trace reference for our site plan. We can see how far across we can go. So if we use one of these walls, extend it all the way to the boundary, come back to our 3D, we'll see we've created something quite large. We then wanna copy that wall directly to our ground floor plan as well. This is gonna allow us to make this building look bigger than it actually is. So how wide do we wanna make it? Well, personally, I probably wanna make it about as wide as this window to really allow maximum width. Here we can introduce a nice cascading green wall to really give this house some punch. Looking from the street, a beautiful white, black, green design is gonna be simply stunning and it's gonna stop everybody in their tracks. What we do need to do is actually give this wall some stability though, because that will never stand the test of time. If we also do that on the upper floor plan, you'll see we've boxed it out a little bit, given it some actual strength and stability, but also faked most of it because that there is just an architectural feature. Personally, I don't like this window right here. So what I wanna do is actually extend it up a little bit and then break this elevation some more. So what I'm gonna do is push this wall back another 500 millimeters, reduce the earth I created and cut that slab out. Now we've given this some definition, some bulk, some articulation, and we've broken it up a little bit. It is very, very bulky still even at this stage and it is still a little bit squished, but there are constrictions on this site. So we're just gonna leave it as it is. Coming back to our first floor plan, I wanna introduce a, a louvered system over this garage. So let's go into our object. Let's type in shade and just use a simple solar shade. If we change those pen tools like we've previously discussed, change a layer to roof structure. Let's just go roof covering for this one, drop it into our garage and manipulate it so it fits the way we want it to. If we come back into 3D, we see what we've created is a louver over our carport, but we wanna give it some more louvers. It's way, way too open and not actually what it'd be like when it's constructed. So let's change these figures from four to maybe 25. That way we have a ton of louvers available to us. We also wanna change this to wood so it matches our louver screens. Finally, we're gonna need to introduce a column as well. We haven't talked about columns too much, but if we drop a column in by simply using the same settings that are by default, go into 3D, see where it landed on the wrong floor straight away, Let's drop that to the ground floor, press OK. We can extend the column similar to how we've done everything in the past. 
go through these settings, change the size of the column to what we want it to be. So let's say we want it to be 100, change the material to wood, change the structure. We want it to be some sort of timber structural column. Press OK. So what next? How can we further this design? How can we make it even better? Well, at the moment, it's pretty boxy. It's pretty basic. It's still pretty boring. This wall, I still believe, needs to come even further. So let's push that out another 500 mil just to really continue to give this house a bit more grandeur in the overall design, extend everything to suit this new parameter. And there we go. We're starting to get a bit more grandeur in this house. We're starting to make it look and feel like it's worth investing in our time and our services. As part of elevation design, you obviously want to do this in 2D or 3D, whatever you're most comfortable with. Personally, I love designing in 3D because you get to see it from every single angle all the time, rather than a generic 2D shape. 2D shapes are great up front, but it's not what it's going to look like in real life. You really need to see it from every angle, every axonometric possible, and just keep working through it. Now, if we come back to our first floor plan, turn off our trace reference and zoom out a little bit, you'll see a number of markers on the left-hand side. If you don't see these markers, you can create them on the left either by the elevation or the section tool. Today, we're talking about the elevation tool specifically. Next week, we'll talk about section tool. What you want to do is select your very first elevation marker. I like to start with elevation 01 at the front of the house rather than elevation 3 as it's depicted by default here. So what I need to do is select that elevation marker, rotate it 180 degrees, and then drag it in front of my house. Typically when you document elevations, you document them from the boundary. You want to know where the natural ground level is at the boundary and also where it is at the house. So I'm going to move it back here for the purposes of this, and then we're going to move it a little bit later as well. If we go Command T, open up these settings, you can make this elevation marker look like however you want. There's not that much critical information here that we need to talk through, but what we do need to talk about is the cut and uncut elements. Whenever you're cutting through something in elevation, you don't really want to be. That's more specifically for sections, but if you are, you want to leave it as cut non-shaded. Uncut is everything else visible in the actual elevation. So you can change this to a whole bunch of different settings. Let's press OK, open up our elevations, and you see it's completely in color. If I come back to my floor plan, open up those settings and change this, let's go color fill non-shaded, press OK, double click back on elevation 01, you'll see once again, completely changed, except what we're cutting through. Elevations are something that change over time as you progress in the construction documentation process. At the start, you probably do want to have them as a surface textured fill to really give you as much information as you possibly can. For this, Let's leave it as colored fill and scroll down a little bit further. There's two more things that we want to pay attention to here. Fade distance elements. If we tick that box and press OK, you'll see an additional line appear. If I go back to my elevation one, everything behind that additional line is now grayed out. So if you're making a clear reference to distance, for example, we only want to focus on the front of this project here. We can focus only on the front of that project and shade out everything else. If you want to step that, you can step it as well, adjust it, pull it back, change it, however you see fit so you get even more context and even more grayed out, very specific to how you want to operate. Now, personally, for this project, we don't really need it. There's not too much going on, so we can untick our fade distance element. What we want to focus on next is our sun settings. Now, there's two ways to present elevations. You can present it with a custom sun setting so every single elevation looks to have the same shadows over it. Otherwise, you can display it as per the 3D window, which is accurate to your actual surroundings and environment. The accuracy of the in 3D window is very helpful as you design to understand how that sun is hitting each individual wall. So make this a design choice as you move across. Now, if we come back into elevations, what we actually need to show is a few documentation elements in the elevation. First of all, we want to show our natural ground level. So if we go text general and let's use boundary, for example, pick a color, whatever you want. Let's go general drafting black. We want to be able to show where the natural ground level is at the boundary, which is exactly where this object is cut. So if we create that line first, go back to our floor plan, push in a little bit closer to the house, go back to our elevation. 
we can now see where the actual natural ground level is at the house as well, which is quite a big difference between our street and our actual house. So now if we create a secondary line, go back to our marker, place that marker wherever we want it to actually be in the project, we can actually turn off this layer. So if we go right click, layer and hide layer. We don't need to see that layer, but we do need to know that we need a little bit more earth towards our house to make this work. So what are we gonna do there? Well, we actually need to indicate that on these elevations. We need to tell the builders and everybody making this project how we're gonna do that. There's a whole bunch of different ways, a whole bunch of different standards you can do this. You can simply do it as a white fill line. You can do it as earth. You can do it as colored patterns, changes, whatever you really want it to be. So in this instance, literally just to make this really, really clear for everybody, I'm gonna select a blue color. I'm then gonna highlight a section 50 mil below this slab that needs to be blue. And then the rest of this, I'm just gonna make a secondary shape. Again, literally just for the purposes of this video, this isn't how you actually document. Documentation is relevant to your country, to your standards, everything in between, but this is how you would demonstrate that there's a little bit more cut, a little bit more fill and additional information required. If you wanted to make that white as well, you could just to really clear it out and then add a little bit of text as well. The text is critical. So let's start with NGL at boundary. Let's change that to black and then we can also go and create a secondary note FGL for future ground level. Now, just like we created these text notes, we also want to create specific notes. So let's use the line tool and turn on one of our arrows. So coming up the top, scrolling all the way across, we can select our arrows. We can select that arrow style and the arrow color. All of this personal documentation preference, however you like it. You can have an arrow, you can have a dot, you can do whatever you like. It's completely up to you guys. Just simply start pointing to different elements in your project. So we want to talk about the render, we want to talk about the doors, we want to talk about potentially the cappings and the flashings on top of the roof. When we've annotated most of the elements we want to talk about, we want to make sure our documentation is neat and tidy. There is a reason good architectural documentation are what they are. And that's for the very simple fact that they're carefully thought out from every detail. That means everything is aligned, everything is perfectly thought through, and you can see there is intention there. So let's start by adding a little bit of a text note. Everything on elevations has to do with the architectural intent. There's no structure here. We're just talking about colors, materials, finishes. Maybe we want this glass to have black tint. So glass with black, and we can leave it at that. We can keep it quite simple. We don't have to go into too much detail at this stage. You can annotate however you like. Next up at the top, we're gonna to have our custom parapet capping. And what do we want it to be? Do we want it to be metal? Do we want it to be rendered? What do we actually want this to look like on site? This is where the architecture is critical and the details matter. For me personally, if it was all rendered in Australia here, I could use a master wall skyline render to match wall. And that simply says to the builder on site that this is gonna be a completely rendered capping sealed to the specifications and we can document all that as we build more and more detail onto this project with time. And as we progress, we can add more and more notes to our documentation. What you'll also see on the side is two different elements happening, white and gray and an extension of the actual screen. These gray elements are the extents of our elevation marker. So if I extend the elevation marker ever so slightly further, come back into my elevation, that gray becomes white up. Now this isn't really that important and it's personal preference as a documenting. It won't be shown when you export this PDF. So what I personally like to do is just right click and turn elevation range off to just make it a lot simpler, a lot cleaner. Next you'll see all of our markers here on the left and the right hand side. If you press command seven, like we did at the very, very start or control seven, if you're on windows, you'll see all of these boxes here are ticked. What we want to do is untick them to get rid of them or keep them ticked if you want them. When you're documenting elevations, you also want to actually indicate where each window is, what each window is, what the seals are, and much, much more. Now, if I do all of these details, we will be here forever. So if I just show you simply what we would intentionally do, if we only had 2D lines, we would simply draw a 2D line 
measure the sill of that window to the bottom of the house. So we're going to call that four meters for now and adjust that there. We also then want to repeat that for the top of the window head, which is simply going to be another two meters above that. Now, personally, I wouldn't be doing this in 2D. I'd be using the 4D window marker, which makes life so much easier. And just to showcase how simple it is, we can select our course. We can go millimeters from project zero. Let's drop it in, rotate it to where we need to be. And then we can simply adjust it, change it, and it will automatically change the height for us. So I wouldn't be personally be doing it in 2D. I'd definitely be using an automatic system like this, very similar to the door window markers, which we'll get into a little bit later. That's all for me, team. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, smash the subscribe button. If you want more, the playlist to the side of me has this full series. But like always, I'll see you next Monday.